I'm Dr Chris Capel, uh, I'm a lecturer in conservation and I run an MA in conservation here in the Department of Archaeology at Durham and we have uh, about 10 students a year come on it and the lab itself not only supports the teaching and learning of those students but also engages in some artefacts teaching with museum students and acts as a kind of conservation lab for the, the department and so stuff from departmental excavations comes in and is treated here as well. I've defined conservation uh, in print and defended it uh, as representing basically three things revelation, investigation and preservation, RIP. That basically we are interested in preserving the evidence that comes up from excavations. We are interested in investigating it and in order to make it useful for present day society we have to reveal and show some of the things that are buried inside the corrosion beneath the soil uh, and underneath the dirt. So when we're confronted with any artefact we will engage in some to some degree in all these activities some more uh, take more time and more resources than others but all three elements are uh, key factors in conservation. It, it captures um, that object at some point on that change from, from man-made object to, to mineral. And um, we try and then uh, hold it and stabilize it. And hopefully it has enough information in the, the what remains for us to be able to work out what it was, what it actually did. Um, and it's those little traces, the fact that you can see where. So if we have a something like a horseshoe nail, we can see how the head has been worn down from use or, or the end has been bent and it's been pulled out from the horseshoe. So we can see that it's been used. Other examples will be as complete as when they were first new and made, so we know that it wasn't, uh, hadn't been used. So little things like the wear, the length, the, the shank on the nail, these things really uh, are meat and drink to us because they allow us to interpret and understand what's going on on that site. Um, and obviously there is a, a real challenge in stopping a chemical process that that's you know you're heading these objects are heading to entropy they're heading to nothingness just dust um and so to hold that is is kind of it's quite powerful it's a bit like being a kind of doctor or surgeon you 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 stop the decay process um and you make it available so that people see it in museums it can be handling sessions with kids or whatever it's going to be but they can get something from that because had the archaeologists not done their job and we had not done ours. It just would be that brown smear in the soil and, and lost forever. Material comes into this laboratory from a number of museums, a number of excavations and this is really the place where it gets changed from just the stuff that has come up from the excavation into the artifacts which you know, inform us about you know, what happened on the site, uh, when it happened uh, and you know, how things occurred. And uh, we transform these, these lumps of corrosion into artifacts. Uh, we have a variety of techniques that allow us to do that. And it is the students themselves who engage in this process. They are the magicians who turn, you know, uh, kind of uh, base metal into gold, as it were, corrosion into artifacts, which uh, then allow us to uh, create exhibitions and, and show people what actually was going on on these sites. It's um, always difficult in a, 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 a laboratory like this. You're combining a number of things that you need to do. Um, teaching, so you need to lecture. You need individual bits of equipment so that students can develop skills like microscopes and uh, uh, hand tools like scalpels. But then you have some other pieces of equipment like air abrasive systems or freeze dryers, which are used for cleaning and stabilizing particular artifacts with particular corrosion problems. Most of the students who we have applied to do the MA in conservation already have kind of seen the, the kind of magic things that conservation can do out on excavation or in museums in some way, shape or form, or heard about it in lectures or seen it in uh, television programs. Um, the students usually have um, a series of skills and interests in the past and, and obviously artifacts are something which really uh, speak to people that they really understand about 
what people do from the tools they use and the and the jewellery they wear. We all make those interpretations. I mean, I, you know, someone wants to know about me, they probably look in my car and see all the things that are in my car and kind of they can work out what a chaotic man I am. But um, so people are, are used to reading artifacts. We all are, and so really that's that's how people have got excited by the past. They see that. Um, by revealing these artifacts, we can understand things about the past, and they want to engage in that process. And often they will, you know, they will need an appropriate set of skills. Obviously, uh, having a good, decent education, having a little bit of chemistry, because this is a technical process. But also having hand-eye coordination, they have to be able to manipulate a sharp scalpel underneath a microscope and do so without slicing themselves open. Um, so they do need a range of skills. And you know, each time we interview people or we get, receive application forms from them, we're looking to see that they've got that range of skills. One of the ways in which we can do this, and we do do this, is to have the students on the course act as the conservators for an excavation, in this case the excavations at Nevin Castle. This is a 12th century castle in Pembrokeshire and produces a lot of corroded ironwork. It's only about three miles from the sea, so the ironwork is very heavily corroded and each summer we excavate there, we bring back the material to the laboratory and the students uh, x-ray the concretions, these little lumps of corroded ironwork that we get and uh, we spend, you know, a rel relatively early, at a relatively early time in the course, week three, week four, uh, they sit down, I act as the archaeologist and they act as a conservator and we look at the x-rays and the actual artifacts and then we see what they make of them. And to begin with, they're obviously quite cautious. Um, they are not yet familiar with what these things mean. But as time goes on, as they see more and more examples, and we sit down as a group, we're learning from each other, um, they slowly get confident. And after a while, they, uh, they're, they're kind of identifying quite quickly what the, the objects, and then recognizing that some of the other artifacts, or some of these, they're not even artifacts, these, these, these concretions, are no more that the, the uh, corrosion has gone so far that we cannot recover the object and it's not worth them spending time with it. And that decision making process is, is you know, gets embedded in the prospective conservators uh, mind fairly quickly. Uh, and it's amazing how quickly they do pick up the skills and then they will go on and start to clean the individual objects that they've identified. Again, it gives them some element of personal ownership, that's something I identified and saw on the x-ray, it's something that you then go on and clean. So it gives them a sense of engagement with the artifact, which is important, um, but then they are obviously equally concerned to do a good job. And you know, that, that, uh, it's a tricky skill to learn to do, clean off the corrosion and come to a, an original surface within the corrosion itself. Uh, it takes a skill to, uh, some time to master that, but that's very much a kind of what conservators are expected to be able to do and so it's what potential employers are looking for and um, we will have the students record their artifacts and a lot of this material can be then incorporated into a portfolio that the student will eventually uh, show a potential employer and so all the skills that they have learned on the course will be eventually able to be shown to potential employers and hopefully they will get uh, jobs and yeah in years to come, we'll be uh, uh, sitting here telling uh, people like yourself how that uh, to go about the process of conserving, uh, identifying and cleaning, conserving ironwork. Hopefully that, that gives them just the right balance of concern to get it right, um, uh, but they're not cavalier. And as we go through the course, they work up with larger objects and to more complex objects until by the uh, uh, summer, uh, the end of the first year, they're dealing with quite complicated objects. We have uh, social history objects coming in from Beamish, we have objects coming from the Oriental Museum. We may have African tribal masks from the anthropology de department downstairs. So they're dealing with these quite complex things where there are ethical discussions, there may be 10 or 15 materials involved, there may be pigment on the surface, and they have to uh, work their way through all the possible combinations of possible treatments, work out what is ethical, what is appropriate, what can be done in the time, then institute those treatments. And that does mean that by the time they've, they've finished doing that kind of thing, they've got appropriate amount of confidence and then go on into the second year.
where they have a, a placement on you know, any one of a, a number of museums we use, uh, York Archaeological Trust, uh, National Museums of Wales, National Museum of Scotland, Museum of London, places like that. Um, and then they're working in those conservation laboratories, but they're able to be, all right, a, a senior conservator keeps an eye on them, but they are working with curators, they're working with archaeologists, they're engaging with that, that in that team work of identifying artifacts, uh, cleaning, stabilizing, and putting them on display, and often engaging in quite active roles in, inter in uh, terms of interpreting the artifact, recovering information, and that being presented in museum displays and uh, publications.